Welcome to Impatient Histories, the history of telling time, episode five. I'm the impatient historian. In our last episode, we discussed the use of sundials in ancient societies for keeping track of the hours. Sundials worked great out of doors on sunny days, but what about indoors, on rainy days, or at night? Fortunately, instruments that relied on the sun were not the only means people had to measure time. Many ancient societies developed variations on the clepsydra, a device named water thief by the Greeks. To us, the water clock. Water clocks appear in the historical record in the mid-2nd millennium BC in Egypt and elsewhere, and they were used many places in the world for the next 3,000 years. Water clocks came in many different shapes and sizes. The simplest consisted of a bowl with markings on the inside and a hole in the bottom. As water escaped the hole, the level of liquid in the container fell, revealing markers that told how much time had passed. Other water clocks had a marked piece that lowered with a water level. Water clocks were used in Egypt, Babylonia, China, Greece, Rome, India, and later in Europe, and they are amazing. Water clocks could measure time indoors or outdoors, day or night, and could be fairly accurate. Egyptian water clocks were accurate to within 15 minutes in a day, which is impressive considering the physics involved. Consider, as the level of water decreases, so does the water pressure. That means that as water flows from a reservoir, the flow slows down as the volume of water decreases. The Egyptians had mastered the art of the water clock early on and crafted them to compensate for the decrease in water pressure as water left the reservoir. But an intelligently designed bowl was only the beginning. Throughout the centuries, scholars of science and technology found innovative ways to control the flow of water, and their advancements went far beyond merely controlling water flow. In the 4th century BC, the philosopher Plato had a water alarm clock that whistled. In the year 807, the Abbasid caliph Harun al-Rashid sent a brass water clock to Frankish Emperor Charlemagne that sounded the hours by the dropping of little brass balls. Windows in the clock opened and brought forth horsemen each hour. In the 11th century, the Chinese scholar and statesman Su Song designed a remarkable mechanical water clock of his own. Over 30 feet high, Su Sung's clock operated with a water wheel, provided astronomical data, and featured moving figures that rang bells or struck gongs to indicate the hour. As you can imagine, water clocks were very useful, and they made great stopwatches. The Greeks and Romans, masters of effective communication and appreciative of brevity, used water clocks in court to limit the length of speeches. Water clocks were one of the means that medieval monks used to keep the time, often especially at night, so as to reckon the proper timing of the canonical hours, which we'll discuss in a later episode. And if someone accidentally tipped the water clock over while sleepwalking, candles could be used to mark the passage of hours as well. Alfred the Great of Wessex used a candle clock in the 9th century. A candle could be positioned in front of a surface with time markers or the candle itself could be painted or engraved with the hours. When the candle burned down to a marker, you knew what time it was or how much time had passed. Another simple yet ingenious device for measuring time is the hourglass, also known as a sand clock. It's possible that they date back as far as the second millennium BC since they run on the same principles as water clocks. However, there's no concrete evidence for sand clocks in the historical record until the 14th century. And the hourglass might have inspired some popular uses of the phrase, the sands of time. Sundials, water clocks, candles, and hourglasses were useful methods of telling time for hundreds of years before the invention of mechanical clocks. But sun, stone, water, wax, and sand weren't the only things at hand to tell the time. We'll come back to this topic in episode seven and discuss how astronomers harnessed the stars to mark time at night. In our next episode, we'll take a time out from discussing hours to address a larger subject in relation to time. 
Thanks for watching Impatient History, the history of telling time.